bam that easy so you see we're live down there guys i got a a good friend of mine uh, peter savoya from set the hook uh, you know he came all the way from Newmarket to uh talk about baits and what he you know how, peter doesn't not only make baits but he he's a hardcore fisherman uh like myself and you guys how long you been fishing lake simcoe you think oh lake simcoe since um late 90s late 90s mid 90s and what do you think it's changed like if you talk about lake simcoe like talk to us about lake simcoe what do you think you've seen the most change in lake simcoe in those years oh uh the lake's made a lot of big changes really it's it's you know, when I first started fishing Simcoe, it was primarily a uh, largemouth fishery. Yeah. It had, like, it still has good largemouth. They're actually starting to make a bit of a comeback, but largemouth, I mean, you know, um, that's what you went for. You didn't, nobody went to the north end of the lake. It wasn't until the early 2000s that guys started going to the north end of the lake and figuring out these smallmouth and figuring out how big they really were um and now it's exactly opposite of when i started now you you know you go fishing for largemouth when you can't catch so yeah <laughs> even on a bad day smallmouth fishing it's well, silly bad, to yeah. go yeah to go for largemouth yeah. but do you think the smallmouth not maybe the number size but do you think the same size were there before uh no i wouldn't say that they were as big as they are today i think uh the numbers were certainly there back then, um, but size-wise, no. I think they're definitely bigger now than they were back then. I mean, you know, we had a, you know, a lot of changes, but zebra mussels, water clarity. Um, you know, now with the introduction of of gobies that have been there probably for six or seven years, but they're really their population hasn't didn't really explode until the last couple. So yeah. that's that's gonna I think in the next four to five years you're going to see a small mouth uh, factory on Sipco. you think it'll be even better oh 100 percent 100 because the only i think has gone better but it has gone better because guys learn how to catch them too guys learn how to catch them um you know uh, there's the, there's still times when you when you definitely have to fish off bottom rather than on bottom yeah um, but those times now where you're fishing off bottom are getting shorter where 10 years ago it was almost all year now if you're not fishing on bottom for the majority of the year you know you're you're gonna miss out on a lot of fish and that's only because you know the fish have tilted they're not looking up to eat as much anymore yeah. they're looking down yeah so yeah well I think that's the same thing we see happening with the white fish and the lake trout like not that the shallow water thing is a new thing, but I think it's been happening for a while. I think it's something that we're learning. Everybody is a group, right? To fish for the white shallow. Yeah, yeah. Because you used to ice fish too. Well, you. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's well, yeah. last time you've been ice fishing? Oh, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. So I went. I went out today. I had clients from Michigan. Great guy, Tony and Carson. Uh, it was a grind today, but to Tony caught a big you saw it. yeah that was that was big white fish nothing crazy no. not, but like seven pounds yeah but he was full yeah. and we looked at him and i looked at tony when he caught us i said you got to, you guys gotta have a bet how many you think because i'm a clean i clean the fish for them how many gobies you think yeah well i i i said 30. that wasn't even close mm -hmm. but he was just like he was bloated and when he opened them up you post you posted a picture on your Instagram. On right? my Instagram account, yeah. So I cleaned them up. I put all the gobies together, and I went and put drifters. We got them the drifter because Peter created the drifter. By the way, if you guys didn't know. You guys are late to the party. And I put the drifters in the pictures. He's like, "What are you doing?" It doesn't really give them justice of the color because the gobies are like they're white by now. Yeah. Some of them have color. Yeah. Some some of them were really fresh. Yeah. But the the main thing is I wanted to show why. It's not just the color, it's the size. No, it's size. spot on the average goby they're eating. Yeah. That's why that bait's doing well. And the profile. Yeah. But we were talking about we before we started this too, is because you've done a lot of studies on what gobies actually look like underwater at certain time of the year. And 
I, I, I have my opinion too, but it's the same opinion that we have is that those gobies, it's not really a season color. It's a, it's a mating colors. It's a mating color change, but I do think from, because you've been gracious enough to send me um, quite a few pictures of gobies um, that are being puked up by the yeah. fish you're catching right away. Um, and there is definitely a correlation to the winter where they go darker yeah they go a darker brown when they mate the males will go a darker black and yeah, they, yeah. and i mean we talked about this like six seven eight inch gobies they're black with lots of purple yeah yeah color. purple yeah. almost red like yeah yeah you crazy and you can tell it's they're almost territorial uh yeah they are territorial um i think I don't know if they spawn in the winter. I don't think they do, um, but I, I'm not 100% on that. But um, they definitely, their browns get a little darker yeah. throughout. And, you know, black is is one of the best colors in, in ice fishing for, yeah. right now for being close to the bottom. So, you know, we're working on a few things. We've got a couple of new colors coming out for next year, uh, body styles, body shapes. Um, so, you know, we're, we're pretty jacked to, um, to be working through the next five months or so and getting everything ready for yeah. next year. Yeah. He's poured a color. I've been asking him to make a certain color from what I've seen. And he's made it exactly how I wanted it, a bit darker, copper flake in it. With a black tail, but well, we learned today from the one that puked up that from the gutted fish is not every one of them have a black tail. No, they don't. No, they don't. And that could be male or female. Yeah. That could be the difference. Yeah. You can see this one has a black tail. Um, just from what I've seen, a lot of the fish that had puked up, like the lake trout, a lot of them had black tails. And that's one thing I noticed. Like, that's maybe something you know a different color that we can look at yeah but uh they all the one thing they all have white bellies what they notice white you see in the summertime they have a far more uh you know, pearl you know. iridescence belly yeah but in the winter time they lose that because of that they there's no sunlight yeah, penetration yeah. or not yeah. as much yeah sunlight penetration yeah i mean i've seen some of the videos that you've uh, put out there and i mean it's still pretty bright down there on a sunny early especially earlier this yeah. year when there was very little snow yeah. now it's quite dark as soon as there's snow like it's yeah. silly like you're talking an inch of snow it absorbs the majority of the light and you know what you guys don't see is i'm not a software geek all i do is i do a balance out of the color because when the video comes out it's green right everything is green right so now you can play with the setting where it gives you more colors in it yeah i mean if you and i were both taking a mask and going down there it'd be great well here i have a question for you then so you talked about fishing whitefish shallow water yeah is that something that um, as the season progresses, you start to go deeper because if that's the case, then early, let's take this year specifically. Yeah. This year, there was very little snow early season. Yeah. So there was a lot of light penetration through the ice and yet the fish were still shallow. Well, you know, I used to say, and I still believe it, like for what we're, what we're talking like trout, there's, there's the white fish that feed that stay deep, the camp and felt, the main body fish. And then there's the white fish. I don't think the white fish travel as much as the lake trout. Like a lake trout can be in camp and felt right now, and you go out tomorrow, she can very well be around Thor. Right. I mean, that fish not not stopping. Now there's the I think there's the shallow water lake trout that are steady feeding shallow. Like people living up north, they don't go in this city, right? You know, there's there's different kind of human beings out there. There's people who do live in the city, city slickers or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where are you laughing? You're from there, man. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. No, no, it's no disrespect to anybody. It's just I I think the lake trout are a bit like that too. It doesn't stop them from coming to Barry if they're from Toronto, right? Or Camp and Fell going to 
to Thor, I think a lot of the whitefish are a bit more residential. They're like the, the whitefish that are staying in Camp Fell, they're there year round, and I don't think they're feeding on that. They have a different feeding pattern. Like you go to Camp and Felt, you catch those whitefish. 90% of the time for me is they're chasing. Like you're moving your bait up. Right. You can get that too shallow, but I never really catch them on bottom in Camp and Felt for two reasons. You're fishing deeper, and Camp and Felt, you know, that's there's this much silt at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So although with this, I'm fishing 80 feet, it's gonna stay on top of the silt. If the fish comes even close to the bottom, he's going to make muddy it up real crazy. Right. So he's going to have a hard time finding it again. Right. Now, if I'm shallower where there's it's a harder bottom, there's still silt a little bit. That silt will clear up real quick. Okay, so yeah. let me let me ask you a question then. Because I, I get this asked a lot um, on my Facebook and, yeah, yeah. and the messengers. Why does this bait work so much better on a jig head rather than on a drop shot ice fishing because okay so today's a perfect example i took tony out and carson i told him uh i you know i went out uh, saturday and looked looked around for them and i want to see what the bite was like so yesterday and you gotta find out if it's a hot bite they don't care where it is Right, like any fishing for any species, when they eat, they eat. Don't they get a four-inch tube on. Right, um, but but you got to figure it out, right? If the if the bite is hot, they won't care for something on the bottom. They'll just want to eat it on top and chasing. But I told them we got to see how they react when they first come up. And when they first come up, as soon as you move your bait, they go down, drop, open the bell, go down, and that fish has to be on bottom like a goby. That's well, no, you that, don't that, see yeah. gobies swimming no, around. No, gobies are no. always on bottom. No, but if you if you look at all the videos that you've done, yeah. the underwater footage, yeah, most of those uh, whitefish are three to five feet off bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, most of them are. Uh, they're always three to five feet off yeah. bottom, and you know that's a testament to how clear uh, Simcoe is because they can cruise along. And not only do they hear it, but yeah. they see it, yeah. and they just dip down, yeah. and and boom. So but that's how they feed too, right? Yeah, that, but but that's my point. So if you had a drop shot rig, you know, up where they didn't have to turn, if they didn't have to go down or didn't have to go up, you would think that you would get more bites. Yeah, but these fish, and that's the main thing for me is, I keep going back to this. You live in the woods right now right right you're living in the woods yeah you're feeding on squirrels right now mm -hmm. so all you're going to do is look up right squirrel 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 right you know and, and or rabbits if you're on a rabbit pattern that's that's all they are right. it's not like you and my god today i want a big mac no no you know and you don't get to chew so that, after that goes back to create, my... create your rabbits so okay. they've been absolutely. feeding with yeah absolutely i think absolutely uh, the drop shot 100 percent works hundred percent works. Well, it works. works. I don't think it works as good no. as it on the bottom. As 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 it is on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. It's today all the all the bites we caught, um, uh, some on the drifter, and the biggest one came on the lipless. And even Tony's like, that can't be a whitefish. The lipless so big. He, 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 that lipless doesn't fit in its mouth. Right. Well, you saw the what we. Yeah. What we cut uh, out the, there was some uh four inch five inch big ones yeah yeah twice the size of this oh yeah twice the size of that um the lipless won't fit in this mouth because the lip was hard to go i mean you gotta think that goby that he's eating that's about four or five inches like small mouth when they'll come they'll, they'll smack it with their mouth closed right right but a goby, you don't think a whitefish does that? You think he just? Yeah, I would. I would think they just suck it in because if if you watch in slow mo, like I have, because it's I I find it's part of my job to try and understand and see how, and that's why to me that footage that you spend so much time getting, uh, because it is cumbersome for you to get. I I understand that, but for a guy like me 
I'll I'll slow mo that and I'll zoom in and look and see exactly how that fish picks that bait up and what it you know because a couple times you've seen them they circle they'll come down and they go away so what is it like what was it that made him turn why didn't he commit that very first time yeah I I think they're a lot smarter like I like to call them stupid I think they're a lot smarter I think my eyesight yeah too yeah yeah a lot of those fish that should have that should be feeding more like on smell vibration and instinct on simple they lose that i mean those fish they'll see things and well for myself uh fishing simple for so many years it doesn't matter if it's small mouth uh, white fish large mouth when when you're talking about the gin clear waters that simcoe specifically has in my opinion and I've tested it and and put it against, you know, baits that look exactly like a goby. Yeah. Compared to just a green pumpkin one. Yeah. Or you take, you know, the closer you match the bait to exactly yeah. the fish, doesn't work as well. Yeah. Doesn't work as well. So that to me is interesting when you see them come down, nose down, and and then and then just go away. But oddly enough, most of the time they turn around and come. They'll back. turn around because that's their instinct. But going back to be, them being able to see it, when the clarity is there, they'll turn around. They'll stick around. He's willing to eat, to eat, right? He's just setting himself up. But if it's dirt, mucky water, when the rivers are running, right? Oh no, it's, it's hard. It's hard. No, it's instant. Because oh, they don't know next time they're going to see one. I got they're it. like running like this. Right, right, right. You know, right, right. that's why it gets so good. They're like. That might be the last time I see one right. in a while. Eat. It's not about feeding windows or moon phases, or it's about when is the next time I'm going to see one. Yeah. Being able to eat. I mean, are you are you guys catching uh, many herring out there? Not where I fish. Not one bit. See, when I used to be a nice fish out yeah. there, I mean, you know, we would catch them uh, quite a few of them and a lot of them. And then afterwards, I remember when I started not going out as often. The ministry actually put a limit on them, and uh, now it's only what two, two day, yeah, two. But I think that hair, and that's me. I'm not a biologist, but from what I could see, or from what I can see, the herring population is not even everywhere. There's a good population in Captain Felt. There's a good population all throughout the South End. That's why the South End's on fire for lake trout right now, right? And Beaverton, but. Beaverton, when you're fishing for perch, you'll see them come in, but they're like small herring, four, four or five inches. Now, if you fish camp and fell, they're almost like two pounds. They're like 60 inches. Right. 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 I, I, and one thing, you know, that the rainbow smelt, I think, is something that's, it's not there as it used to be. You don't mark them as much. No. You don't mark them as much. No. We, we used to fish bass and camp and fell four years ago. And you would have to fight to get through the air. Now, but this year apparently there's a lot of bait in Kevin. Well, I didn't fish it as much, but to go back into, you know, you're saying about staying shallow all year, or I've always said if you're going to target, especially lake trout, go deep because there's more oxygen. There's more, right. and as the season progresses, that oxygen goes away. It's just natural, right? That's why when you fish perch, as soon as ice is at, ice is in, before the ice is in, literally before the ice is in, they're in the deepest spot. They're in 35 feet. The minute you put a layer of ice on it, boom, they go straight shallow. Because they know there's oxygen, there's food there, we're going to go there, and then we're going to come back. And then we're going to go back as soon as, you know, it ice starts out now. Right. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's another thing too. I mean, this bait is awesome for perch, spring perch fishing. We're not supposed to tell anybody. Well, hey, it's, <laughs> I thought we were here to make friends and help everybody out. <laughs> no, it's true. There's one thing, you know, I used to be hardcore into the perch in the spring, getting to them. And the one year I remember, Peter, it was small crawls. You didn't have a small crawl on, you didn't catch them. And that's what I love about Simcoe. Over the years, it's changed. Mm -hmm. These, it's starting to, and you can see it. Like even guys, not, not, I'm not a perch expert, but in the spring and in the winter now, 
you're transitioning to bigger bait to bigger catch bait. the bigger perch. You see the guys catching 14, 15 inch perch? Bigger bait. It's bigger baits, bigger plastics. Yeah. The spoons were great, but I think a lot of them are like feeding on gobies. Feeding on bigger and, and your fish go big like this. You're not you you're eliminating all those nine inch, eight inch, ten inch perch. Uh yeah, absolutely. That's one big that's absolutely. one big thing. Yeah, right. That's How many one, times do you hear guys saying, "Well, I could probably catch the big ones if I could get my bait down to them," because yeah. if get, you're using a small bait, it gets eaten before it gets down to them. And the big ones are like me. I ain't getting <laughs> off the couch. I ain't swimming back up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's true though. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're big for a reason. Well, and especially the you know the big females, which are the real jumbos that you know they're they don't want to move around. Oh, yeah, they're a big all. sack of eggs right now. Yeah. You saw guys catch them. There, guys were posting pictures of literally oh, pulling out the holes and the and the eggs were coming out already. Really? It's March first, March third right now. So you got a foot. You got uh, only one weekend left in the season. Yeah. They're technically two weeks, 14 days. 14 days, but one so week, only one weekend. Only one weekend, but a lot of guys that are into this don't take days off. Yeah. 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 But That's what I used I used to come up, I used to only fish Wednesdays. Yeah. But less traffic. I mean, less traffic. Today, Do you think that, like, because I've heard um, that it's been tough for catching whitefish out there this year. Like, it hasn't, like, guys aren't getting them steady and and they're not getting a lot. I, I think, you know, I kind of predicted and I'm trying to remember where I based my thing, but I told that the lake trout season wouldn't be, you, you wouldn't catch two, three, four, five lake trouts in a day now. You caught one, you're lucky. Yeah. You know, maybe two. Um, we lost one today. And you're right, the whitefish, two. You you mentioned that when I when we talked outside today. I think the whitefish population is still there. It's doing very well. I mean, I'm catching probably five to one natural, one being a, a, a stock fish. I think they're not as schooled up anymore. They're spread out. Right? So what would make them spread spread out? Pressure? Pressure and food food the food, food web being everywhere. Yeah. But it's changing. Right. I mean, we used to fish an area for two, three years where it didn't matter on a bad day, on a good day, you're catching a lake trout and you're catching a white fish. And I've been there about a dozen times this year. And I'm telling you, I didn't mark nothing. Mm. Nothing. Okay. Well, that's where I think the gobies are are yet still to change the dynamics. It's of, almost as if those uh, gobies are moving. Well, see, before the gobies, it was they had to follow the bait. Yeah. So now that the goby population is pretty much, you can snag them or see them on camera almost everywhere you go. But I'm sure that they are thicker and thinner in certain areas. But as that goby yeah. population grows, like Erie, for example, yeah. they're not going to have to move around. That's at all. which is like what's going on right now. So now they're spread out instead of being concentrated in one area. That's right. That's one thing that you know where we're catching them right now. It's we're either on top of the shoal or behind where they're, they're those guys know what I'm talking about, like where they're relaxing. And with the current's coming this way, I haven't tried this side where they should even be more active where they're facing the current. Right. But you're gonna mark less fish. Um, it's a, so is it going to become where you have to find the bottom that's going to hold the most gobies or are you going to look for the bottom that's going to hold the most? Weight? I would take you at the nicest bottom that I could find for myself right now. And it's two spots that I used to fish in right now. I'm telling you, it's, you can't just look down and be like, okay, that's the bottom because it's used at like sand with gravel a little patch of of uh little rocks and maybe one boulder that you got everything there okay everything now they're not on there they seem to be it doesn't matter but, i mean but if you put a camera down are you seeing gobies there no you won't see the gobies the cameras are not that good really yeah no no you'll see them dart no 
Really? No. I mean, I got this bad boy. I mean, I got the drone, and I think they, they hide before. Oh. I think it's in the winter, pretty, yeah, and they, they move, don't, don't move as, they don't dart as much, and they really go dormant. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Everything does. Um, I mean, you saw the footage I saw you of this. Yeah. Pretty, pretty bad. That's pretty stellar. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's. Yeah. I'm really waiting for the one day where I'm feel because it's about cr being cr creative. Like, not that I'm artsy or anything, but to do that footage. You guys are not going to see that footage anytime soon. No, and I, to be honest with you, I, I want to wait till I feel like okay, I'm going to put it together. Um, one, not a lot of people know we went out, and I know there's perch around, and instead of punching holes everywhere. I just took that. I don't know if you saw. I got a hundred yard roll with it. Right. Let's go find a perch. Woo! Okay, they're over there. Walk over there. Drill a bunch of holes. Catch them. Catch them. Yeah. But it's crystal clear. The water still. Yeah. Shallow. Uh, and the and the thing is with this, I thought fish would be spooked. They you saw it. Yeah, they're there. They don't care. No. I mean, you saw it. The, you saw the one bass. Yeah. I didn't see two. And then when you're looking at the bass, you go to turn around, and all those bass that you don't you didn't see are curious. They're behind a drone, so you turn around. Whoa! Yeah. Where did you guys come from? Yeah, I'm gonna get mugged. Yeah, yeah. So they're it's curious. Like, it was like a bar, and somebody said free booze. Yeah, yeah. But you saw like two <laughs> maybe in the yards only. You saw the one on bottom. There's some big ones. Yeah, and they weren't spooked until you actually. Yeah, they're like, okay, well, you can push the drone up to it and try to chase that one in particular, and then it took off a little bit. But yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, see, so for me, that's because I know that's how we fish smallmouth. But you know, when you fish Erie, if you're not getting bit by gobies on your tube or your drop shot or whatever, pick up and go. Really? And I think it's going to be. But I think that's because the they're same. bigger there. I was going to talk to you about. No, that. they have they have small ones too. They're all. Do you get bit by gobies here? Yeah. Yeah. All the time, man. In the summer. I, I don't know. Maybe I don't I know about ice nice fishing. Maybe I need your rod. I, didn't get I mean, if I'm fishing with like, a cat, I caught them. Caught them. Yeah. Like drop shot and caught catching them on like they actually bit the hook. See, you learn something. Oh yeah, but. Well, you go to Erie, it's like they're a oh, nuisance. Yeah, they are a nuisance. They are a nuisance, but that was my point. So if you're on Erie and you're dragging and you're not getting bit, because you'll pull your tube up and there won't have be a tentacle left on it. Yeah, 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 I saw that in the fall. So we move. And I'm thinking, I don't think the population of gobies on Simcoe is the way it is on Erie, but it will get there. And... I, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be the exact same way. I, I think they need the right bottom, though. They won't that, live in silt. That'll be that'll be up to the fishermen to figure the what bottom in the yeah. winter time and what depth they they like to be in in the winter. And I guarantee you, that's what it'll be. You will have to find the largest population of goby, and you will find the large the large population of whitefish and lake trout. Yeah, you will. Yeah, well, you saw, you commented on that one, uh, that lake trout flaring up on bottom. I think the same thing that you said. Like, you know, you're saying that lake trout that you saw just come up on bottom and go, Wait. oh, yeah, they fan. They'll they'll come down they'll, like this, they'll turn over, and then they fan, and they go up. And what they're doing is they're pushing the goby yeah. up off bottom so they can eat them faster. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I think that's why you don't see, like, the video that you saw where it cuts off and it goes away. That lake trout really leaves. But I'm telling you this one thing is if they're spooked out of the camera. They're curious at the same time. I've had, you guys seen the video. They, they go, like, they literally go for the bait and they pop the brakes the minute they realize there's a camera. They go, whoa. Oh, oh, no, no. Not that one that you had up uh, a couple weeks ago. That you just seen that fish come. How, out how long was, did I have the fish on though before I set the hook? Oh yeah, no kidding. Uh, I noticed that too. I could have loved that fish. Yeah, and a couple of white fish I noticed too. But because she stayed there, you should yeah. go right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you like today, man. It it was like that. I'm, I I know that, a lot. That also shows you how important having a good quality ice rod has now 
you know, become it, it's like you, I can't use my grandfather's or my, you know, like a stick. Yeah. I, how we used to catch fish on those, I mean, okay, you're you're basically ripping, right? And that's yeah. how you catch those. But when you're finessing them with a drop shot or a or a small jig or or a, a drifter, you got to have a rod that you feel. Yeah. Like. And your line, a lot of people don't get the whole line no, right they in hand. They just I there's know, quality in fluorocarbon. Yeah, there really is. There's there's literally like there's quality. There's cheap stuff. And there's Mercedes that cost the floor car. Right. You pay for, I hate to say that, some stuff that you pay expensive is not that great. Oh, yeah. It's but not always about money. It's not always about money. Some you line, have to, you have to try some it. Line I've, I've tried them all. If some line has never given me anything, I know that you carried it for a while. Some line. Yeah. You still use it. Oh, that's all I use. I mean, you're not sponsored by them. No. <laughs> but you still use it because at the end of the line, there's money to be made. Absolutely. Like winning a tournament. Absolutely. Or so, catching a big fish. So, you know, ice fishing is so much more uh, populated by participants over bass fishing or walleye fishing only because of the fact of ease of access. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when when obviously like no different if you're in a boat or you're in a hut or you're in, in the open, when they're eating, it doesn't put a hot dog on. You oh, yeah. It. When they're not eating, that's when you need. That's when like you need that. the quality need line, the, the quality rod, the quality reel, the quality bait. You need everything to be right. And from what I guys, the feedback that I've been getting this winter is that it's been tough, and you know, you're, you're just not getting the numbers. But the guys who have fine tuned it, yeah. Confidence are still catching their limit every yeah. day, every yeah. time they go. Yeah, so it's not that hard. You know, uh, Tony's from Michigan. He's never targeted whitefish or lake trail like that, ice fishing. And I told him it's going to be really hard until you hope one for you to understand what you're doing. You know, at first he got the rod down and he sees me and I'm, I'm lightly tapping it. And what I'm trying to do with that bait is. To make it wiggle on bottom without lifting it. Toby's don't do that. No. I want to wiggle it. Right. A little bit. Hey, buddy, I'm here. And every three seconds, I'm going to lift it. Because you know, all yeah. of that fish, you're marking it. It's a cone. You know, if you're fishing 30 feet, you're, you got an eight degree, eight, eight, eight foot radius, which is about like this. So although you're marking that fish, that fish might be here and not on your bait. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you think he's on your bait because he's on there. You're marking him. Sometimes you know you gotta let him know, hey bud, I'm over here. That's when you see them fading away. When they start fading away, hey bud, I'm over here. You see them come around. Okay, you're there. Sorry, okay, I lost you. I fished the summer for a smallmouth the exact same way. Yeah, yeah, because the there's so way. much down there. Yeah. I'll, although it's super clear, I mean. All I do is they're that color color to match the bottom, the goby too, right? Yeah. You're not seeing it like this. Yeah, right. They've seen it like this yeah. where, you know, it's like trying to pick out a deer. And I tell you, Peter, look at the deer over there. It's hard to pick up unless you saw the movement. That's right. Right? That's right. Before I forget, two things. Before I forget, I got to tell you that I already told you, show you the story about what happened. Anyway. So it's a funny story. Scott, I don't know if you're watching, but it's, I got a sore. I got to say, yeah, he is. He's right there. <laughs> anyway, funny story. You know what I saw today on the lake? On the way? I'm driving, and Tony's behind me in the quad. I'm driving. I'm like, was it a dog? I thought it was a dog. Now I'm like, it's a coyote. You know, it's all like all brown. And I'm like, it might be a big bald eagle. I kept riding towards it. Guess what it was? Take a guess. Otter. Oh, an otter? Yeah, I got a video. Okay, I'll post it on my Instagram. I got a video, and you'll see I get to the hole. It's not a bird, because you would have saw bird tracks or right, 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 like right. A, a coyote. You would have seen tracks through. It's all yeah. fresh. No, yeah. it was an otter. Well, and a coyote wouldn't jump into a hole either. No, yeah, <laughs> you're right. You're right. No, but I don't have the video of, like, what I'm saying is there's footprints but there's not footprints leading to the hole right but you're right like i don't have video of the otter but i have video of me going to the hole and seeing what i mean that's pretty cool to see oh yeah i saw them in uh 
I didn't think they were from what they, they hung around like you know, they do. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I was fishing in the fall. Maybe it was how big was it? Because it could have been a pink. No, 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 no. No. Otter's big. Yeah. That that was the size of a uh between a Labrador and a smaller dog. Oh, okay. It was big. It, it had to be 45, 55 pounds. Whoa. No, no. It was big. But I was fishing the fog in Cooch. And I roll, I, I, uh, as I roll by, I saw all these things flashing around. I thought they were diving ducks at first. And they'll roll by by my truck. No, they're a pack of otters. They were much smaller than that one. Like, they almost look like muskrat, and I thought they're baby muskrat. I'm like, right, they should right. be close to hibernate. They're all otters playing on their back, but apparently it's a common thing. They move to the Trent Water Seven way. They're looking for something to eat. Well, it makes kind of makes sense too. It's, uh, I mean, it's the only spot open right now too, right? Yeah. Yeah. She went through a pressure crack the one night. Oh, okay. But I mean, I didn't see any open water. Like, I don't know how she found that hole either. She swam a long time on the water. Well, yeah, they they still have to come up for air. So it was big. Mm. It was a big one. And it, it was alone. And the other story, so <laughs> I gotta say it, man, because these guys know I got crones, so I've, I've been there. Scott's probably biting his fingers and you're gonna tell my story. So me and Aaron are out there, I don't know, a couple a few couple days, I can't remember. And uh we're coming back and I got this one area that's not really fish at all. And uh Scott had seen me there, and that's fine, but I wasn't there, so he went and fished it another day. And uh he left. I I, I didn't know he fished it. And uh me and Aaron were coming back and I said, Hey, let's let's stop here. I haven't fished here since early season, right? So I go to stop here and I see I see holes. I'm like, oh, somebody found the spot. And uh, I looked down the hole. I looked at the hot imprint. You see the three holes, and you can see where the sleigh was sitting. And behind the sleigh was just like somebody had threw a bunch of coffee everywhere. And I see little napkins, three napkins. And then I'm like, oh. And Aaron's looking at me. He's like, what's that? I'm like, oh, damn. Somebody was in a hurry. I get home. I'm kind of laughing. I'm like, whoever was here is like just spray painted, it, spray painted it out of their ass. <laughs> There's no hard pieces. I put it together. Aaron didn't understand anything. It's rated R. It's all right. The podcast rated R. <laughs> I could tell somebody just spray painted out of here, and it, it was, yeah, it wasn't healthy, you know, very soupy. <laughs> Scott saying no. So I can't want to forget about it, man. Hey, somebody's got, you know how many times I'm having me on the boat? Well, I got to go because I got Crohn's. But when you get Crohn's, it still comes out solid. Not that, man. Somebody that's, took a spray thing. That's fucking down. good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> I get home. I don't mention anything to anyone. I'm watching TV. And Scott sends me a message. Hey, buddy, I got I to gotta tell you something. I'm like, and I read the message. It's, you know, we... We saw you the one day fish there and we had a really slow day so we we're figure out why not try where we saw sea bass you must be on something and uh i hope you're not mad you know and uh he goes but uh my buddy <laughs> got had, real he sick. got real sick started puking and shit and we had to leave but to me it's like because i saw the crime scene and i understood everything that happened <laughs> with the three napkins i'm like the guy's running short of napkins yeah. he left there probably with his pants down and then i saw the message i was laughing for half an hour Scott. it was hilarious it was hilarious oh you had more than the stomach flu man it was like e coli e. shit he had uh, yeah no it's funny it was funny i just you know when you see a scene of something and you know exactly what happened and then i get this message i was laughing don't feel bad you know a lot of people are like and it happened a lot recently you know people recognize the sled people recognize the hut and people will come straight to me hey you see bass you know nice to meet you and that's cool it come it comes with making video oh yeah yeah people are like they're they you guys want it comes with making video and the guys that have been doing that they're like 
they understand I might be guiding, I may be filming videos. You know, like sea bass is on fish. I'm not on fish all the time. You know, most of the time I, I like fishing new spot. That's me. What's fun is catching a fish on new spot. On new spot doesn't mean it's great, you know. And um, like Saturday, we fished. I don't know, easy twenty spots. So, do you have like your your boat GPS with you? Yes, I got a, a Elite Seven on my graph. Okay, on, on my stairway. So you're you're finding these areas by. But I by don't the, have my waypoints on the boat. No, but you're 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 finding your structure and your contour lines and everything by your GPS on your on your yeah. Helix. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Understanding. I don't know if you watch it when I made the map with all the currents, where I think most of the currents are coming coming from from my experience. But doesn't the current change with the wind? No, moon really? phases. Oh, moon phases. So if I was to, if I was to, I became a, a believer. Uh, salmon guys, Steve was talking a lot of when I fished with them about moon phases. He didn't fully understand, and he understood that it got the fish going. And then when you look deeper into what moon phases actually do, that's what moon phases create the tides. Right. Moon, say, moon yes. phases, majors and minors are, it's either it's kind of bringing the tide in and the major will pull it back out. That's how they're able to predict what the tide's going to be in 2020 on, on the Delaware River. It's spot on. It'll never change, right? Uh, so it's primitive, pre-calculated how it is. So if I put a, a camera for two hours before a major and I'm fishing and the current's always been coming, coming this way, let's say. The current's coming this way, and that moon minor happens, or that moon major happens. That current, when I'm, I'm pounding bait on bottom, it creates a cloud of dust, mm -hmm. and the cloud of dust is going this way real quick. It doesn't stick around, well, not super quick, but like current might be 0.4 of a mile an hour, probably less than that. When that, when that major and moon, uh, that major and the minor happens, that cloud of dust is, is, is staying there. You can see so. The way I see it is because I time the footage times 20. Right. You can see the current go, then it slowly switches. It's like slow motion, but going super fast. Then it goes back this way, it goes, then it starts again. But it's it's very super minimal stuff. That current's not going to take you away. That current barely takes my bait away. Right. But it's right, right, something. Right, right, right. For them, where it's a lake where they don't see. There's no rip, like river system where they can swim up to for a long time. It's massive. So even when the wind blows on the ice, it doesn't increase or decrease. I'm sure it can. I'm sure it can. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. yeah. I'm sure it can. So let's say you get most of the currents coming from the south end, right, going towards north, mm -hmm. right, because that's, that's where all the water comes through. Um, I'm sure if you get a south wind pushing north, that's going to create some, some drag, you know, it, it it got it's um uh, I'm looking for the word um uh, uh gravity you know the wind's going this way the play right. the all everything that's underwater right right now if, if there's no ice then even more well yeah but I I I do remember that when um, we were ice fishing and it was a windy day your line would always go with the wind. So if I'm facing the wind and I'm jigging here, my line would go underneath me. Yeah. More, more so than when it wasn't wind. Yeah, because so. if it's pushed, if, if the wind's really hard this way and it decides to go that way, I might be because you're floating away too. <laughs> <laughs> when you start marking arcs, instead of your line, you're just marking arcs, yeah. that's when you go, oh, that's what happened on the, a few years back when they were fishing the, on Erie. Guy says we didn't know we were moving. We realized we were moving. The school of perch we're marking were arcing. That's how fast they're going. One point six miles an hour. Now instead of marking, you know, lasagna, you're marking just right. arcs. Yeah. That's when you know. Oops, <laughs> too late now. Now, one thing that we talked about that I wanted to um, express uh, here today was. Um, I'm fully aware, obviously, of the shortage of availability of the drifter that was we had this year. Um, 
I've I've rectified the situation. Um, we've we've got people working now. It's not just myself doing all of it. So you're not going to see um, any lag in availability, or or you got to wait a week or anything like that uh, moving forward in the next couple of months. And we've got a lot of new exciting stuff coming down too. Yeah. And some of the stuff I've already saw, showed yeah, yeah. you. And, um so we're we're pretty jacked about you know everything that's going to happen over the next uh four to five months and you know i i try to appease everybody the best i can uh by answering all your emails and everything and i truly do appreciate all the support that you've given us um this season and um you know just good feedback is always nice and some uh, you get some bad ones too but that's all part of the well game, i right? love everything you can't yeah. please everybody no you can't uh what you the main thing guys is that stuff's made in your backyard right it's, it's made in the gta yeah by him now you hired somebody yeah you know it's not made overseas no there's no quality issues it's poor in Ontario, yeah. for Ontario, well, not this. This thing will work in Wisconsin. I'll get you wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. But this, but this, a lot of our colors, especially some of the winter colors that we're yeah. going to come out with next year, yeah, are specifically for simple. Yeah, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah, I mean, they'll work somewhere else too. Sure, they will. Because but it's, it's, be, that's be where you do your study, study, right? Right. I mean, Lake Simcoe is not like. Well, it's it sort of is. It's. It's his it has his own entity. When you think of Lake Gunnersville for bass fishing, it's probably what you know. It's the capital of bass fishing because it's in the middle of everything. So yeah, it's not the biggest bass, but that's where everybody. When you think about a bass, Lake Gunnersville comes on your top three, four, five. Absolutely. You know, and then you got Okeechobee. Yeah. Then you get California Delta, and then you get a couple of lakes in Texas, right? Yeah. But Gunnersville is always on your mind. Lake Simcoe is the same thing when it comes to ice fishing. Yeah. Like Lake Simcoe. So especially since not my videos, but like especially people posting on social media or what Lake Simcoe can do bass wise, lake trout wise, whitefish wise, Chris Gula coming down. Uh, you know, you got Alex Ferrick that came down, which is a, a, a big YouTuber to, to fish with Carol for bass. I mean, Lake Simcoe is put on the map. The Johnson brothers, probably the best bass fishermen we have in Canada ever will be. Well, they will tell you. Yeah, and then you've got, you know, when with the, the fall smallmouth, I mean, 30-plus pound bags coming in, you caught a 30-pound plus bag. Um, you know, that, trust me, I know a lot of U.S. guys, like high-end anglers. Yeah. And um, so putting Simcoe on the map, they try it They all know about Simcoe. They all, oh, like, yeah. For the Johnson brothers to say, that Lake Simcoe is the best mama fishery in the world. And they're not saying you don't come up here to catch four, 40 bass. No. We're talking your best five, like yeah. size-wise, like yeah. average. Yeah. But but I'm going to go back to what we talked about earlier in the Gobies. I think you're going to see the numbers of bass. And here's where a lot of times you may say, well, if there's more Gobies, they're going to eat more fry or more eggs. And there won't be as many bass spawning or eggs maturing and hatching. That's true. But if today you have a hundred fish spawning, and in three years from now you have 300 fish spawning, yes, the Gobi population has increased, but the survival rate, whatever that percentage is. It's just going to go up three times. Yeah, but you well. guys, like, when you say you guys, like, you've been fishing this lake since, man, I was probably not out of high school. Well, I wasn't out of high school. Like, you've been fishing this lake since when the last time Montreal won the Stanley Cup, 93. <coughs> hey, you want to talk about the Leafs? You weren't even born when they won the Stanley Cup. No, I was. Whoa. How old are you? I was born in 62. 62. The last one they won was in 67. 67. <laughs> no, but I was there. I was cheering. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and they might win this year. Oh, no, they're not winning this no, year. No, you don't think so? No, but the fact of the matter is, is in 93, had Gretzky got that 
high sticking call, we would have scored, we would have played you. Oh, okay. And we would have kicked your ass. Okay. All right. It, it wouldn't even have been I don't I don't even think it would have went four games. At three, they would have said, fuck, just give it to him. <laughs> hey, Montreal, I think every series that they played, except the last one went to the seventh game. And a few of them went overtime. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember when they played the Flames, and the Flames ended up winning for the Stanley Cup Finals. Like, I was like 89, maybe. Remember that? The Flames won. Mm -hmm. Who can forget Atlanta McDonald's iconic goal? Well, I was pretty young. <laughs> he was jumping around. But then they won. I, I went to the parade, but I mean, the Leafs are going to win this cup before the Canadians anytime soon right now. But uh, if, going back to it, like, you guys always talk about Simcoe back in the day. Catching 100 fish days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What happened to those days? There's not as many bass as there used to be. No, but there's reasons for that. And if you historically look at the bait fish population, yeah. the smelts 20 years ago, people were lined up on the shorelines of Simcoe smelt fishing. Yeah. That's how many smelt there was here. And then they almost got where they were hardly any. Like right now. Like right now. There's very herring. There's, there's probably a quarter of the herring population there was 20 years ago. Hopefully so, that comes back. You know, and, and so all these smallmouth were open water. Like when we used to catch these, you know, if you caught 100 fish, not many of them were over five pounds, but a, a, a really large percentage of them were two pounders. Yeah. But last year and the year before, I started to see where I'm catching more and more two pounders again. And, and it's all because of forage. You can't have a healthy, strong population of whitefish, lake trout, uh, no, yeah. bass, pike. It doesn't matter. You got to have the forage for them. And, and the gobies are going to change the game like they did in Erie. But Simcoe is probably 10 years behind Erie. As far as as far as Eerie Eerie size wise is catching up real quick. Yeah. Twenty seven pound bags is a norm now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. scary. Yeah. But it's also scary to think that what if that Gobi population goes away slowly? There's a lot of bass to be fed there. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah Erie's that, catching up. But the thing is with Erie, I think it's the difference with Simcoe is it's very on tap versus bigger. It's very on top because of it's so susceptible to win. Yeah. Right? Yeah, where here you can fish. There's not that many you can spots fish, on you here. Can fish you any can. corner. You'll be protected somehow. Yeah. Yeah. There's not that many spots on Lake here, you think? They got that river that really helps them though. Yeah. No, there is there's a lot of spots on area and, and compared to Simcoe? Oh yeah, way more. Way, yeah. way more zones. Yeah, it's not that many in Simcoe. No, not It's really. always seemed like those spots are moving, but equally. So if that one spot, let's say, dies, they just move to another spot. It's not like that, that spot stays alive and they spread out. Right. Remember last tournament on Simcoe? I said, so when you fish tournament, guys, you do practice, and there's always talk, talk. Like, I do a fish against Peter and other guys. We still talk, whether we share some information or lead guys completely in the dark. But that happens. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that one area. I said, Peter, if you see me there, I'm struggling. And he saw me there. I'm like, oh man. And we both wasted time. We caught we caught all the fish somewhere else. Yeah, we caught all our fish, but I landed a uh, six pounder there. I caught six pounder. In practice. No, in the tournament that right no, you were there, like right, yeah. right in front of you. Yeah. Well, you were fishing a bit deeper than me there. Yeah, I was. <clears throat> yeah. I like to fish that a little deeper. Yeah. But that place is like they move a lot on that. On that, mm -hmm. they move a lot. It's not where other spot where you got to find them and then they'll be there all day. That place is. But there's a prime example. Okay, so it was myself and one other boat that found that spot the very first time it was discovered. Yeah, but Navionics doesn't help with that. No, but yeah, like, okay. So when we first found that spot, there was no. 
uh, hump contour lines we found it by soundings yeah on the map yeah and uh, one other guy found it and I mean that first year we fished that in the bass pro shops open I mean we crushed them I mean it was ridiculous yeah. how many I, I don't even know how many 25 pound bags we caught it was stupid but all right so now you go there you can barely catch a limit and if you catch a limit like we never caught small fish the odd one. big one yeah. yeah before it was all big ones i think i think as much as i'm a culprit for it and that's hypocrite to say that but those tournaments in the fall when you're taking those five big fish yeah and you're bringing them back somewhere else they don't go back there and it's no different than the spring ones too the spring one what do you mean like the, the, in, the, in the summer so yeah the well the opening, summer opening, they got opening, the opening, no i'm talking opening weekend tournaments where you're still bed fishing yeah no, that still, definitely hurts they're still bed but fishing. i think i think in the winter if you take them somewhere else you take taking 500 fish and put them all in the same spot over and over again right they'll end up going winter there yeah maybe i'm not sold on that there's so much good there too yeah but i'm not sold that they'll they'll stay in like if we're talking the bass pro shops open or yeah. or the, you know i'm i'm not so sure those fish stay on uh cooch but no i don't think they do because they can't i don't i just take it you just <clears throat> they may not make it back there um you know the, it's it's Dude, weird it's, it's weird different i think at that time of the year they need to know where they're going to feed they can't waste much energy yeah. i mean that's one lake this year that you know all the other lakes like they're either going on a slope or going up slowly that's one year that's one lake cooch this year that took a, a dive i mean let's face it too the tip the average angler whether he's a tournament angler or or a weekend angler or a hardcore non-tournament angler everybody's getting better at catching fish well everybody's yeah. you know there's so much information to be gathered out there um you know baits are far better than they were before i mean you know the realism of those baits too you can pull fish so much better now you can yeah yeah i mean you didn't have that no 10 15 years ago no when we first i'll i'll tell you this when we first started drop shotting and we started drop shotting probably in late 90s yeah were you dropping it with worms our yeah worms um half of worms uh grubs yeah. um i mean the my first drop shot setup was a tube and something above it well yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i would see and, you do and, that yeah and 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 back it still there, works i bet oh yeah it does it has its moments use the fish more than anything yeah, right it has its moments but back then we were like doing this with our rods yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. now Don't with with the plastics that are available like all my plastics they're all they all float they're they're soft and the reason why they're as soft as they are is because the softer they are the more natural they move so you they, don't get those big chunk of salt no you don't get no i mean I, everything is salted but it's salted in a different manner yeah, yeah. No, but you get some plastics out there, Peter, that you you can, you know, Texas trig a bait all day, and if the bite's slow, you're not catching many fish, or if anything, you're going for half an hour, you have to change the bait because they use big salt parts of salt, and those parts of salt dissolve, now that bait's wrecked. Right. This doesn't happen with that. No, no, it doesn't. And, and it doesn't matter what bait you're using of mine, whether it's my crush worm in the summertime or even in the winter time or or the drifter um the less you move that bait oh yeah that's the, one the more you catch yeah like if you sit there and so you've got your rod your your drop shot set up and you're going like this with it you're, you're not catching nothing and that's why I, mean, I was telling tony fishing today it's like be subtle like you want that bait to just let them know it's there you just don't let, want yeah, just raise it and lower it and if you're gonna move it like you were saying just it just, tag, just quivers I'll, I'll quivers. tell you what I tell so many people ask me that same question and I tell them all I need you to do when you're holding your drop shot rod 
is every once in a while, if you want to twitch that bait, just squeeze your handle. Yeah. Squeeze the handle with your, like close your fist on your yeah. rod. And that um, is more than enough to make that thing go. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It, it really there's goes. current down there. You don't there's see. There's current down there. There's boat movement. I mean, you're in, you know, I mean, you don't yeah. need to move it extra. No. If, if you're using a bait that when you don't shake it, it lays like this on your hook then you're going to have to constantly shake it because I don't yeah, know about you, I've, like never, I've never seen a, no. a bait fish, you no. know, sit like that. Yeah. It's got to be flat. Yeah. If it's not flat, yeah, it ain't working. No, I don't think about that. Oh, it's and they're getting more educated because more and more guys are learning about it. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's true. It's, it's like a lot of people get frustrated. Like Cinco has broken many anglers. The oh. broken me and broken you, like bass fishing, ice fishing, oh. perch. It just it yeah. seems that those fish are like just a notch of every other lake. They're smart. Yeah. I don't think it's just the fact that they're smart. I think is, I mean, you put a camera on there in the summer in fifteen feet of water. How many goobies can you count on a square foot? Hundreds, hundreds, tiny, medium, one big one, and then two crayfish. You gotta fool that fish to, uh, you know, yeah. fool that fish. It's a, uh, but it's so rewarding. You can't. Uh, that's why I stopped telling Tony days. If you're going out every day, you catch 20, 20 pounders every day. You would not do it. You want the highs and lows. You want the challenge. No one, nobody remembers anything that was easy to be done. No. You remember the hardships. And and the biggest thing and the reward that comes with that with with Simcoe is I love to hate that lake. Yeah, well, because you'll go out for one day, catch one, two, three pounders, and not see one six, and you go back the next day, and boom, you catch that six pounder. You're like, oh my god, you know? Oh well, remember that day? Yeah, I was up there, there, and and we went to that spot. And we were catching them on the, my dead quiver. Yeah. And then the next day I went out and I actually bought brought a camera with me to do some filming because yeah. I was testing a couple of colors and I couldn't get them to eat the dead quiver. Yeah. So I switched to the two and a half inch tube. Yeah. And I just absolutely smacked them. I mean, it, that was August. Yeah. And I caught one that was almost seven pounds yeah. in August. That's massive. Yeah. That was a big fish. Crazy. Yeah, I edited that footage. Yeah, that you was did. A big fish. Yeah, yeah. That was a big fish. He didn't fight for long, man. Eh? Yeah. Like for because I think you use straight fluorocarbon. Oh yeah. I think that helps yeah, a yeah. lot. I think so too. I think you can you can horse them in a bit quicker. Well, you know, there's 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 really good evidence to support using braid to floral leader. And there's good evidence to to support using straight floral. Personally, I think it's um, personal preference confidence. Um, and confidence. Like myself, I'm not a good knot tire. So why would I increase the chances of, yeah. of adding a knot? Like I'm a good knot tire when you know when I tie to my to my bait. Yeah. But line to line, yeah. I have struggled with it for you know, forever. And I think it's probably because of my vision mostly. It, and I just find it too cumbersome and, and it's just not for me. It's but just not for me. I feel that people say there's no stretch of fluorocarbon. There's, stretch. Not, there's, there's stretch. stretch. not as much as mono. No. And not, and, that's, and that's some little mono stretch. has more stretch than others yeah. stretch too, because when they create a uh, floral, it's it's abrasion resistant, but it's stiff. And when you have stiff line, you have weaker knot strength. So yeah. in order to gain knot strength, you have to give it a little stretch. Yeah. So there's gives and takes and different. Like if we were talking about Sunline, Sunline has what maybe ten, close to ten different types of floral carbon. Yeah, it's insane. You know, it's insane. It like is some very... you can't you. There's some you can't even use on a spinning wheel. Yeah. It's too stiff. Oh, comes up like cable. <laughs> <laughs> they almost stick on that one. 
But I think if you're fishing like you, like you're fishing a tube straight for carbon in five, six feet of water, as long as you put a good hook set in there, it's not coming out and you're not going to bend the hook out. No, no, that you're not going to help. But you have no different than ice fishing. You've got to have the right rod. Yeah. If you're using a rod that's too stiff, yeah. you're going to lose that fish. Yeah. You know, the only the only thing I use braid to fluoro is is on hair, and I usually get my partner to tie the knot for me. And it's like on a drop shot rod, which is mushy because you're using. Braid. Yeah, it's on a me uh, ultra not ultra light, sorry, um, medium light. You know, seven four seven two yeah, long seven rod. six long Water rod. You know, you're you're really shallow, skinny water. You know when it's it, you got to have the right rod. It's you know you you do as much light line as possible, but you got to have the, the and I hey, yeah, I, the I swear I, have you played with a uh, line diameter and ice fishing? Well, no, because you're not cutting through water. But yeah, no, I I go down eight pounds. That we, that's what we used today. Okay, we do, went down. Do you eight think pounds. you would get more bites if you went down to six? Do you think it's I a, used to use do you six, think it's a line thing like the same in the summer? I'll definitely see it. Oh really? Oh, they for sure see it. Even with the low light conditions of the ice and the snow. For sure. Huh. That's it. For sure they see it. So then why don't you go down to six? Well, if you catch a light trout on six pounds, it's twenty pounds, she's gone. She you're gonna get her to the hole. Now it's trying to lift her up. And line her head in the hole where it's your issue. Right. And it's not like the old days where you're using a 42 inch gaff. Then you're. <laughs> yeah, right. gaffy. You're not yeah, gaffy. You're not gaff. No. Yeah. No. Difference. Yeah. It's a. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a. Uh, you know, eight pounds seem to help a little bit today. I think you see it. Uh, I mean, these fish today, I could tell where your bait's on bottom and they're looking at it, but they're so. Anything will turn them off. Anything you do wrong will turn them off because they're not on putting a feeding bag. They want to eat, but if anything, you know, well, it's not, obvious they want to eat the one that's they they not home full. <laughs> if they come and touch with their oh. the light, do they spook off? Oh. And you're like, I just got bit. I didn't even set the hook yet. It's gone out of the ground. I mean, if. To him, he, he might not see it, but he feels it. Right, right, right. And a lot of times, it happened twice today. And you know, you gotta, you're fishing with a vibrato or a lipless or even even a drifter. A lot of time, you think you're getting bit, and you end up catching the fish like on the side. That's because it just got over your bait and he, he touched it with his fin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you're like, oh, I got fish. I mean, you're not doing it on purpose. No, you're not doing it on purpose. And yeah. a lot of time. No, no, it's, visual. it's not the, visually seeing it. Yeah, it's the way they grab the bait too. Like if he grabs the the drifters like this and ends up grabbing it upside down when he sucks it down, right? And you're gonna set the hook on his chin, right? You're like, oh, you need the bait. No, he had the bait in his mouth, but not the hook in his mouth, right? Like the uh, the big fish he caught. I mean, I saw his rod. He was just tapping on it. Oh, it just loaded. But the the you know the lipless he had. You can tell he ate the the head of the lipless. But when he's up the hook, you got him on the side of the face, right? Now, do you with the with the lip list? Do you find that you have to change colors a lot, or are you pretty much no? Some years color? they're like dedicated to one color, like they just won't touch. So on the lip list, they just like two years ago. If you did not have that Tennessee shot, these guys know what I'm talking about. The Tennessee shot, you were not getting a bit. And Aaron had a really good bite. This year with the Tennessee shad, compared to another color where you could only get them. On, that's when he caught those two big burbots. Well, I've noticed uh, a a dip in sales in white this year. For what? What? Yeah, yeah. I it's. I mean, I mean, white's a mainstay for ice fishing, and I you can out. you can actually see like the numbers, the the, the baits. That you're selling in white are nowhere near where they are not man color. it's like today guys out there well, i was on the lake today all day and it was dead up there not saying that there's a lot of people it's just like for 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 nice days it was i mean i came off here 
Um, I came off the, the launch where I launched. There's not one truck parked. Mm. Not one truck parked. Literally not one truck where they usually would be. 30, 40. Maybe they all went to Lake Muskoka. Could be. Could be. Maybe it was stuff for, for Saturday. <laughs> Could be. But uh, you're right, probably. But, um, you know, it's a... Uh, Do you fish there much? For, Muskoka's fun. For, for lake trout and yeah 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 it's like joe yeah i heard it's, it's like it, it's all different baits again and everything else there's not not really too much um they, as much as i bash live bait i'll you can bring the best live bait you can have ice fishing this will have fish live bait on simcoe on simcoe on simcoe right i mean i've tried man i've tried you can you can put your uh your spreader down there you're not going to catch as many fish. Um, I've had cameras down there where uh, uh, we were fishing with live bait and the dead minnows, you put them on the water and you see there'd be like five dead minnows on water. Not one of those white fish, not one of those lake trout, not one of those bits would come and pick one off. They would always go for that bait that's moving a little bit. Hmm. Always. Now, if you would have that minnow fluttering down, I see them eating them. But on Muskoka, I mean, live bait rules. There's days that guy fishing beside you, if he has live bait on a little spoon, and all the fishy. It's weird, weird. But Simcoe is, I mean, bass fishing. You lose, I won't you use live bait. I'll be, I'll be for it. You're not going to catch 30 pounds on live bait on Simcoe. Then you can no, I agree. You can catch the small ones first. Yeah, I agree. you want them to catch the small ones. I agree. You can, you can catch the all six pounds, and it's just that's just simple. It's just you're not you're not gonna do as well. I think mm -hmm. maybe leeches on a really hot day where they're not moving as much. You know how hard it is to throw a leech around. Yeah. You need a nine foot noodle rod, <laughs> six pound four carbon, and then you cast it on the second cast, and the leech goes over there. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's funny. I had a leech, um, I still have some of those, yeah, and it, it never really sold. I do have, guys I have a it. handful of guys that uh, request for it, yeah, because guys, guys don't know about it, yeah, but I don't know, it, it worked really well and oh. it stayed on too. Oh, yeah, because because the guys don't know about it. Right, but the leech bite has a window too, as a space, right? If if they're feeding on twos, you're not gonna catch them on leeches. No. Like, yeah. No. Like now with the Maribou too, guys coming out from Maribou Air Jig. Yeah. I mean, it's not even a secret anymore. Now no. everybody's throwing it. Oh yeah. Um well that and the spy bait. Spy bait's huge. What's the next bait you think? Because right now <clears throat> I mean, the spy bait was the talk last year and was the talk the year before. But what's the next bait? Top water. I'm so cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Could see that. Mm -hmm. Could see that. I think, I think you're going to start seeing smaller baits. Oh, smaller baits. For sure, dude. I can tell you right now, um, I've been using smaller baits for. Actually, one of my tournament partners, Jeff McGee, got me on to using small baits um, years and years ago, especially in shallow water, especially yeah. in shallow water. Use smaller baits, you'll, you'll catch way more fish than you would if you were, you know, well, that's one of the reasons why I came out with my two and a half inch tube. Man, not tube. I don't yeah. throw a three and a half or four inch anymore. I do not. No. No, no, no. It's two and a half. And and what there's there's, a, there's other difference. small yeah, but there's other small tubes out there. But what I why I made the, the set the hook one the way I made it was the fact that it was still chunky. Like it had yeah, a, like had a, had a would be, bigger, yeah. like a like yeah. yeah. It's just short. Yeah. And and but well, that's how the crayfish spawn in May, late May, on shore, and they develop real quick. Oh yeah, you know 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They can eat a four inch gray fish. No problem. They'll destroy the claws, but they don't get as hurt as much on a little baby one. Yeah. That's just a little hors d'oeuvre. So they, they, and they, but they the don't even, the even the small, like the small crayfish, they don't even have to, you know, I guess chew it, if you will, chew it. They can just one gulp. Yeah. Just inhale it. Yeah. But they don't, it. won't get hurt. It won't, it won't get caught. Yeah. They don't have to bite down on it. Well, it's just gone. gone. So talking about small bait, were you thinking about making a small one? Yeah, we might uh, we might come out with a like a two and a half inch drifter. So that's three inch. Yeah. What do you guys think? Should we try a smaller one, or you guys would like to see different colors first, or bigger? I don't think bigger at all. I would fish it. Yeah. So instead, if you were to make a bigger one. To me, that's the way I would approach it. Is more like a two, like dead stick it, flutter down, flutter up. More like when they're real, chasing, real like for the big, right. for the big lake trout. You know, it'd be dedicated for lake trout. Not that the whitefish wouldn't eat it, but no, yeah, it's a uh, yeah. A lot of people are smaller, smaller. Uh, Valla boy says he fishes FLW with Jack. That's a I mean, you know, it's a neat community. Guys, we're going to wrap this up. If you guys got a few questions for Peter, he's got to drive. He's got another, another hour drive back. I'll take some questions for sure. Yeah. Uh, shoot them up. Rap, what do you think of the new rap of Peter Lure? I think it's deadly for, you know, those lures? Oh, yeah, that... Um... It, it looks like it has a really unique action to it. I kind of like what is it. That? It's it's got that that it's like that new swim bait. It's like um, it's got a really good rock to it. Is it hard? No, bait soft bait. Yeah, rapple. Yeah, with a heart with a with a like I think half of it. I think the nose is hard. Oh, yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. not not like a three sixty, but. Kind of, okay. I, I think that's what he's talking about. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but it's got a good rock to it. Two or two and a half, you need a, a drifter specific jig. Uh, well, I, it kind of does already. Yeah. He's working on I'm that. working on a, on a jig specifically for the drifter, and it will be ready for next season. Um, it's going to be unique. <sighs> It's really going to help with the uh, fishing it on bottom, I think, anyway. I, th I think it's going to be. Yeah, I like that one. I got to test it a little bit. Uh, you, uh, There's a question here. Uh, what's the best place to get your bait near St. Catherine, Niagara Falls? Is uh, Fishing World have it? No, no. Unfortunately, nobody out there uh, carries much of it. But if you, I don't know, wherever you do your you're buying if you go into the store and ask them for it they can certainly get it for you haha <laughs> good the best questions out there is from chris the outdoorsy gal she lives not far from here she says can you make the falcor baits you know how many times i've asked this guy <laughs> you know how many times he's like you gotta come pour them yourself yeah <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing yeah but you know as much as i would love to see a falcor out there it's not cutting it this year. No way. You know, too big. it'll come back. No, it's not too big. I think it's just. Well, it's too big for this year. Other years, it no come back. Be. Look, it's the lake trout bite is not what it used to be. So, do you think what we always say when we're pre fishing for, let's say, the Bass Pro Shops open? Man, I can't find them, but when I find them, they're going to be loaded up because I fished half the lake and they're not there. Do you think they load up like that too? Do you think that's why you're not catching them where you traditionally have caught them in the past? Um, because they actually have I think so, yeah. moved. Like I know, I know for a fact. If I want lake trout tomorrow, I know where to go. I know, I know I've never, I not that I've never. I haven't fished those areas this year, but I know they're there. I, 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 I would put money on it. I know they're in the south end. The south end's on fire. Is that because the bait's there? What? The bait's why why there, are they there? I, I think those fish, like, you know, it's like me. Some weeks I like eating gall. Some next week I might like eating Taco Bell. 
I, in yeah, certain you're talking, areas, you're talking, and they're two, you're talking two months they've been there. They've been there a while, and that's where they're hanging out. Then that's where the food, the yeah. most food has to I be there. That, that, I think those food chains are moving there, right? Yeah. And there's a lot of pressure there. That's mm -hmm. why a lot of guys are asking me, why don't you come fish in those lake trout? Because there's 30 huts on the shoal. Mm -hmm. I don't like that, man. Right. I'd rather not catch anything. You know, I'd rather, it's, it's just, to me, it's, it's just as quick getting there. I can access the whole lake, no problem. I just don't like, I'd rather, it was nice where we fished today. Yeah. We could have caught maybe a bit more fish, but if we fished a community hole, but I'm not going to take like the community hole. You know, I want to show them the experience. The experience, you know, fishing stuff. And it's funny too, when you, when you fish it, I mean, let's face it, a community hole is a community hole for a reason. And that reason is because there's a lot of fish there. Yeah, but they're educated if, too. If, yeah, but if you take your client there when you're guiding, then the perception to a client is such that well, he's just taking me to community halls. Yeah, no, he wants to live the experience, right? Absolutely. People see me in the videos, and most of the clients they see me from videos. They they like the guy's fishing with nobody around him. Well, we fish with people around because I had friends that came down. Um, we're like, what's the bite like? I thought, oh, that's, that's why I'm fishing. If you want to come down. Uh, but then we parted ways. Um, so, yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it's, I think a lot, a lot of those trouts and the whitefish, they're spread out now. A lot more baits. And, you know, instead of being tighter in certain areas, I think they're spread out. Well, I mean, the amount of fish that this bait has caught this year. As the guy who designs it and makes it, I, I am absolutely blown away at how well it's working. I mean, I mean, it's great for me to see, but I mean, I can't believe how well it's working. It's working. A lot of guys are not 100% sure how to work it yet. I had a good buddy of mine, Sebastian, you got a, we had a couple hours on the lake, messaged me I'm on the lake every weekend or once a week, and I can't hook into them. And I walked into the hut and uh, he would get the drifter on. I said, man, there's fish down there. I can get on the bike. I picked up the rod and it's silly because it looks so easy. Like I walked into the hut, grabbed the hut. He's been fishing four weekends in a row, no white fish. I literally grabbed the rod off his hand on my leg. He's like, no, no. But he's just, at first it's that confidence and knowing what to do. Right, there's a big difference between this and then just twitching it. Right, right. And as soon as he saw that, he started banging white fish. He's like, "Okay, I got it now." You know, it's just that that little confidence, knowing that they're they're gonna eat it on bottom. So, no different than the summertime. The less you work it, the more fish you'll catch. You gotta work it though in winter. Yeah, but you gotta work it in not right, not yeah. not vigorous. It's on bottom, right? So it's not like a drop shot where it's fluttering with right. a little current in the wind. Yeah, it's tiny, tiny. Yeah. And if I see see the fish like it hasn't picked it up in three seconds, I lift it up. And at the same time, when I lift it up, it doesn't matter how sensitive I have a rod. Those white fish, they'll literally be like this, right? They don't feel those bites. It's not like a bathroom. Right. Right. They'll put it in their mouth. I think. You know, they're putting their mouth, they're playing with it, and they're like, okay, I'm positioning you. So are you using a one aught or a two aught hook? I don't know. You can't talk to me about hook size. I only know flipping hooks, the size. That's about it. Okay. I don't know what a one or a two. Well, okay, so on here, show me where the hook point comes out on the bait on the on Right here, the last rib. The oh, one so before the last rib. So that's a two aught. Yeah. That perfectly happened, one eight. Great hook. Love that hook. Um, yeah, if I could design a hook, like I know I bug you on that all the time, would be this. That hook is the best hook ever made. Yeah, that's unfortunately that's a gammy. It's a heavy wire gammy. That's not even a standard gammy. That's a heavy wire gammy. I don't. I don't know if you want that in for. For the whiteies, though, I'm not so sure it'll penetrate as good as a as a, as a traditional because it's wire. Thick. That's right. 
How about the bass? The thick bass is fine because first of all, you're you're laying into them more because you're you got further, a longer rod. Yeah, you're further and away. You got movement too. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That there's space for tiny um, uh, gauge, smaller gauge. Oh. Well, like if you look, take my uh, dead quiver head with the corkscrew on it. Oh yeah. That's a one odd. Yeah, that's what I use. Black nickel gammy. That's what I use. Yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah. I think it's too small. I bought a bunch off you. Yes, you did. I, but I, I still think it's anymore. too small. I Wait, think that really? hook's too small. They're on oh, no, perfect. Really? I can't find them anymore. I have bought 50 off you. I, I have two. Where'd you, did you lose them? They're somewhere around my tackle <laughs> box. They're, I didn't lose them. They're, they're somewhere in the, in the all this. But guys, we're going to let Peter go. He's got to drive home. Thanks for tuning in again. I, I, I don't know how many guys have been. I've been uh, viewing. I don't know how many guys we got, but uh, how many? What? What? It's gonna be on here. No. Oh, you see everybody that's on it. Oh no. Uh, well, yeah. Thank, thanks for Peter. You can check all his stuff. It's setthook.ca, right? Yeah. All his stuffs on there. Sean Blaze, the bait bucket, True North. There, yeah, th those are the three stores around Simcoe that uh, have. Blaze just got a fresh batch. Blaze just got a fresh batch today. Um, I think True North is sold out. They got theirs on Friday. Um, so, you know, again, appreciate all the support and everything you guys have uh, uh, done for us. And I apologize for, you know, the um, not having it readily available for everybody, but. Um, you know, we'll be in much better shape next year, 100% guaranteed. Sweet. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. Thank you. Thanks we'll for having see. me. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming.